Hi guys, today I'll be showing you how to draw this little robin and I'll be particularly focusing on how to draw the different types of feathers that you can see on him. I'll be doing all of this with Prismacolor colour pencils but you could do it with any colour pencils. Alright, let's get started. Now the first thing I want to do is get my sketch down on the paper. To do this I'm using one of the mid-tone Prismacolors that I plan on using later in the drawing. Now I want to do this very lightly because I don't want it to show through at the end. Getting an accurate sketch down is extremely important. If you don't get the sketch right, it isn't going to look realistic at the end. So really take your time over this. Once the sketch is done, I'm going to work through section by section. And I'm going to start off by drawing the beak and the eye. But before I put down any colour, I need to select the pencils I need for this area. When I first got my Prismacolors, I drew out swatches of all of the colours so that I can have them down on a piece of paper in front of me. It makes it far easier to see what the colours actually look like. So I'm going to compare the colour chart to my picture and use this to select the colours I need for the beak and eye. So all I need for this little section is a few of the warm greys. I've got three warm greys, the black and the white. And I'm going to start by drawing the lightest colour, work my way up to the darkest and back to the lightest. So I'm just building up the colour, building up the gradient on the beak and making sure I really look at my reference photo so it's accurate. Now I'm happy with that, I'm going to focus on drawing the orange chest around the eye and beak. So I'm going to look at my swatch again so I can select the colours I need for this area. So although the area looks orange when you first glimpse at it, looking at the reference photo a little bit closer, there's some light yellow, oranges as well as a little bit of red and a ready brown. So I'm picking out six colours for this section. For the first areas of this section, I'm not worrying about creating any feather marks. I'm just trying to get myself a solid base ready to put those marks on in a little bit. So I'm starting with the lightest yellow I selected and putting down a smooth base all over the section. I'm not pressing firmly as I do this, I'm pressing very lightly and I'm focusing on using the side of the pencil and working in little circular motions. Once I've done that, I'm going to work through some of the other lighter colours to build up in a very similar way, just to make sure I avoid any of the lighter areas where I want it to stay that light yellow colour. Now I'm getting towards the darker colours, I can start adding in some feather type strokes. And the feathers on this orange patch are very similar to fur. So I'm just going to make tiny little flicking motions and I'm looking closely at the reference photo to make sure I go in the direction of the feathers. Now I want this area to look very soft, so I'm going to work through very slowly building up the colours. I'm going to keep using these darker colours to build up the fur, and then use some of the lighter colours to blend it out a little bit. I don't want anything here to be harsh, so I'm still using the pencil quite lightly and I'm allowing building up the layers to build up the brightness of the colour, as opposed to pressing really hard with the pencil. Now that area is done, I'm going to start drawing the feathers on the head. And looking at the reference photo in comparison to my swatch chart again, I can see that it is mostly made up of a mixture of some greys and some browns. So I'm going to start off with the lightest colour I've selected again and cover the whole area with a nice even base. And then I'm going to build up through the colours in a similar way to the way I used for the orange chest. The feathers on top of the head are far softer than the feathers on the chest, so I want to try and get that across with my pencil marks. I'm taking care to not really use any sharp lines. I want it all to be nice and soft. So I'm still working in those little circular motions, which enables me to get the shading where I want it, but for it to not look too harsh. So I'm working my way through the greys and the browns going darker and then back down to the lighter colors. I am also adding in a little bit more of the orangey color I used from the chest because there is some orange that is kind of coming gently around the eye. Now I'm going to move on to the robin's chest where there are some far more defined feathers. Towards the top of the robin's chest it is mostly made up of greys and then as it gets round towards the bottom there are some browns mixed in there as well. So I'm going to be using the same warm greys as I used for the top of the robin's head. And I'm going to use the lightest grey once again to apply a solid base of colour. Now I'm going to use the mid grey tone to start marking in the little lines I can see that make up the feathers. 
and they do cross over each other and go in all sorts of different random directions. I find it helpful to start doing this with a lighter color pencil and then go over it a little bit darker with a darker gray because it enables you to map everything out and if you make any mistakes, they're very easily covered up and kind of blended to make it part of the feathers. So now I've marked out the initial shapes, I can use a darker gray to really accentuate the parts of it that need to be a little bit darker. And throughout all of this, I'm working in longer flicking motions, similar to the ones I used for the orange section, but a little bit longer and more flowing. So I'm going to blend all of these greys together using the white pencil. I find the white pencil very helpful for smoothing out an area. I don't want the feathers to be too defined here. I do want them to be a little bit fuzzy so they look a little bit softer. So I'm just going to go over the top with the white pencil, working in those little circular motions, and then any extra areas of detail that I want to create, I can go back over that white with a darker gray again. I'm going to work in exactly the same way for the rest of the robin's stomach, starting with a base layer of the light gray and then marking out the shapes that I can see of the feathers with the mid gray and then making all of these clearer and darker with the darker colors. I'm starting to use some browns in here as well, but I'm still using them to build up that color, still working from the lightest to the darkest. And then when I'm happy with that section and I'm happy with the layers that I've put in, I use the white pencil again to smooth it all out and blend it all together. And then use a darker pencil to add in any particularly defined areas. It does get quite dark where there's a shadow that's made from the wing that I'll be drawing shortly. Whenever you're drawing anything, don't be afraid to use darker colors. And by building up slowly from the lightest to the darkest like this, it is far easier to see where the dark colors need to go. And it's also harder to make mistakes because you've already marked out the areas that need to be darker with the lighter pencils, so you can see where they need to go. Now I'm going to move on to drawing the wing and the feathers are far more defined in this area. It's far less fluffy as we get towards the edge of the wing. However, at the top of the wings, it is similar in appearance to the top of the head. So for this area, I'm going to use a mid-tone pencil to mark out all of the lines that make up the wing. I want to get all of that very clear before I start putting too much color down. Because the lines of the wing are so crisp, I want to get those crisp lines down initially and then shade underneath them and then I will get them more defined again at the end. So I'm going to get all of those colors marked out with a mid-tone pencil and then go in a bit firmer with a darker brown. And then I can start layering colors on top of it. So I'm going to focus on the top of the wing first and creating that fluffy kind of texture that I did for the head. And I'm working in the same way again, starting with the lightest color, working up to the darkest, and then back down to the lightest. To make this as soft as possible, I am still working in those little gentle circular motions until I layer up and build up to the color that I need. Once I've built up a number of the layers and I want to get this all smoothed out and blended together, I'm actually going to use a peach color. I can see in the reference photo that there is a lot of peach. Because I can see this color, I am going to draw it. And you can see that it adds an extra depth to the robin. Now for the more defined wing feathers, I'm going to start off really building up that base. And I'm doing this in a similar way to how I built up the base at the top of the back. All the colors in between those lines of the feathers are quite light though, so, so I don't want to go too dark on here. And once I've built up the base, I'm going to go back over it and blend it all together with the peach color again and on some of the lower lighter bits with the white. And once I've done that, I can start really getting those lines and those darker areas far more defined. Now the edge of the wings really do get very dark. So to start with, I'm using a very dark warm gray and I'm also using some violet in there to add that extra depth. Now I'm just going to add some final definition with the black pencil, which I'm only using in the very darkest areas and then I'll give it a little final blend with the white pencil. I'm just going to whiz through and finish off the tail feathers and finish the underside of the belly before I move on to doing the feet. I'm using the same processes that I've used throughout the rest of the drawing for these areas. So for the feet, there are a few areas that are a very bright white, so I want to make sure that I mark that in before doing anything else with the white pencil. 
and then once I've done that I can go ahead and apply my grey base layer to work everything else off of. Now to build up the colour on the feet I am mostly using the peach colour that I used earlier for blending and I'm using the ready brown that I used particularly on the head as well as using the greys and dark browns that I've been using throughout. Now I'm still working from the lightest colours to mark out all the areas and building up to those darker colours to make them more defined. But I'm not going as dark as the reference photo shows because I want to draw the log in before I get them really dark. So I'll blend that out with the lighter peachy colour and then I'm going to move on to drawing the log and I'll come back to the feet later. I'm just going to really speed through the drawing of the log here. You can see far clearer here my process when I speed it up. You can see that I put down a base layer of that sort of yellowy kind of colour and then used a number of greens to start building up texture before adding a darker brown. And then I used those lighter colours again to blend it all together. Then the final thing I did was add some of the black pencil to really add some contrast. And as I was using the black pencil, I use this as an opportunity to add in some of the shadows that I needed to add in for the feet. All right, and that is it. If you like this drawing and you would like to buy a copy of it, I do have it available on my Etsy store. Check out the link in the description. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing, guys. I'll see you in the next one.